As depicted within the film Sugar Hill or New Jack City, it follows the experiences of young black men within urban metropolitan areas. The film was a translation of the times. Within the 90s, the crack epidemic was at a peak, and urban youth were susceptible to succumbing to the adversities of reduced circumstances and the prevalence of illegal activities. Although this adversity still exists within 2020, it's not as prominent as it once was in the 90s. So to recreate or to reuse the translation of the previous times to serve as a representation of 2020, it would prove to be ineffective. It would not translate well. As we observe the transcendence of this millennium and you take notice of the baby boomers and the millennials and the Generation Z, the generational divide given the generational gap of access and disparity differs greatly. Modern day segregation still exists. Many of the black community and minority based communities are still disenfranchised due to redlining, racism and other isms and phobias of this world yet we are still given a privilege that was not afforded unto our grandparents or our parents but rather afforded to us by them even if this privilege is minute it still changes the course of our existence i feel like europe thrived upon the caricatures and narrative of urban young adults given our adversity such as low quality education domestic instability, illegal activities, reduced circumstances, and so on and so forth. The generalization of our adversities seem to be used as a means to expand the cause. I understand the fundamentals of the year program, and I understand what type of program this is, but at the same time, it is a career development program. Regardless if it's a not-for-profit or a profit-based organization, it's a career developmental program. Personally, I felt like the portrayal of this program and the overall student body favored films like Lean On Me or the televised series The Wire or the true events of the Freedom Riders. It gets to a point and it has gotten to a point where it felt as if your adversity was glorified more than your work ethic itself. Overall, I just felt as if implementations take new forms. Once the transcendence reveals itself to the cause, you know, change must happen as change occurs. For example, the experience of the student body from the class of 2008 is going to differ in comparison to the class of 2001, just in the way that the class of 2019 and or 2020 differs from the experience of 2018. Within 2008, there was a national recession. In 2001, there was a global crisis given the attack upon the Twin Towers. And in 2019, as well as 2020, we are currently experiencing this global pandemic. Whereas in 2018, we didn't experience a pandemic, we didn't experience 9-11, we didn't experience a recession, but we did, however, experience an administration of change furthermore influencing our experience within class 8 during 2018 many of the seasoned administrative members disbanded and departed during my year of experience so essentially what i'm trying to say is time changes and so do the adversities that exist within time for example there was an administrative member by the name of mr v and he shared a story of this girl utilizing her flip phone to do her homework Nowadays, we have touchscreen phones. We have access to the internet by all means. School, the library, work, the internet is more accessible to us than it has ever been. I feel like the severity of our adversities have changed in definition since last used by the previous generations. Europe is a glorified trade school, and it's not really much of a trade at all. You know, it's not really much of a trade school if you're not preparing your students for what they're going to be practicing within. But most people utilize this program for the presumed resources. And again, not to negate racism or colorism or the various adversities that we face as minorities, but to simply state the times have changed. And you cannot reuse or recycle or reduce something when the circumstances and or situations no longer require such implementations. There was a lot of propaganda and false advertisement that took place within the year program. Take for example, something as little as the recruitment process. The only reason why many students were recruiters was because of the incentive for every student you recruited 
Many of our volunteer activities were recruitment-based activities, and even our lunch and learns were used as a means to solicit certain members of the student body for partnerships and corporate investments. I had this friend by the name of Asia, and she was experiencing a monetary setback prior to her admission. So she had to seek assistance from the year program in order to continue her process. Given the assessment and the assistance of her cause, they solicited her story in various lunch and learns, so much so that she grew tired of doing lunch and learns because she knew the purpose of her presence, which made her resentful of the experience. Within the six months of learning and development, I only experienced one lunch and learn. As I've stated within previous videos and as I've probably stated within my current video, or as you can tell within my current video, I'm a very straightforward person. I was very much so a business-oriented individual given my experience within the Europe program. So initially, I saw this exclusion as odd given the asset that I was within this program, especially within my learning community. Not to suggest that my friend was not an asset herself because she definitely was, but there were certain things that we did differently. I was always punctual to class. And with the completion of assignments, I was always punctual. I was always within dress code. I've gotten awards for accountability. I've gotten awards for perfect attendance. I've gotten awards for A honor roll. I share this not to assert myself as cocky, but just to provide reference. I don't want to speak loosely without any receipts, as you know, a lot of people would say. I don't want to speak highly of myself and not have the receipts to prove it. So there were certain things that we just did differently. And once she explained to me the circumstances of the situation, and once I experienced the lunch and learn for myself, I definitely was able to gain more clarity. I also developed a really good acquaintanceship with my Persian twin, that's what we're gonna call him. He was the yin to my yang. We were the same in quality, yet different in execution. We took a lot of personality tests within this program. So I was a fox, borderline, and owl, and he was just a straight up shark. But we were both top performers within our class and we just had a really good understanding of each other. And just like my friend, he would go on quite a few lunch and learns. And I think the reason why they chose him was because of his background. He was Persian, spoke Farsis, wore the best suits, the most crisp, you know, cuts and creases. He was a young business professional. He was also the youngest child in his family. He came from affluency. And again, he was just your quintessential, eager, young businessman. He made the program look good. Believe it or not, many of these corporations and businesses are still male dominated and there are certain employers that have biases for men, especially if they're men themselves. So as much as we you know, see the portrayal of women in authoritative positions, not saying that this isn't true, you know, it's still a male dominated world. So I feel like they just utilized him because he was your quintessential, eager, young businessman. And that was something that I learned while on my internship at the corporation that I was a part of, not within the program. So there were just little tactics and mechanisms utilized to appeal to our ethos as opposed to our logos and pathos. Not to mention that within previous years, they went through administrative tragedies and adaptations and structural reformations that further influenced the overall performances and results. As seen within the previous student body of class seven, given the insight of my cousins, I was exposed to certain structural imbalances and failures that resulted in the depletion of almost an entire class. So using my better judgment of pesos and logos as opposed to ethos, I wasn't easily moved by the subtle propaganda or false advertisement. Take for example, another experience of mine there was this PowerPoint that was shown during the transitional phase of learning and development into internship. You know, I can't recall if it was shown while we were on internship or prior to internship, but there was this PowerPoint shown during a time where the student body was establishing and developing self-sufficiency. Monday morning kickoff became less influential, plus Delta wasn't heavily enforced as it once was, coaching groups were still present, but they began to lose its individual importance. Class 
seven graduated class eight was preparing for internship and class nine was being welcomed so we were outgrowing learning and development and we were just ready for the implementation process we were ready for internship furthermore establishing a strong sense of independence even while existing within the program and the institution that we in the institution that facilitated our year at branch we were becoming more self-sufficient towards the end of learning and development so rearing back to the powerpoint there was this powerpoint that they would use to show the students that failed the program or completed the program and this was done as a means to maintain retention and engagement the powerpoint detailed the previous class and the overall transcendence of that class Some students completed the program with a job. Some students completed the program with an internship experience. Some students did not complete the program. Some students received assistance from Europe. And some students, by the grace of God and divine favoring, received a position where they were amassing lucrative amounts of money. So every circumstance, every situation, every individual experience varied. I never really paid attention to this PowerPoint because I understood that this was a tactic used as a means to maintain engagement and retention. The more turnovers and liabilities you send into these corporations, the less partnerships and funding you will receive, which only induces the likelihood of that program location collapsing. So I never really paid attention to this propaganda, especially since This was coming from the Europe administration as opposed to the individuals themselves. You know, like, why did they quit the program? How did they amass lucrative amount of money? Why did they not get hired? Why did they just leave with the internship experience? They were telling us what happened, but they weren't providing us with details for full understanding. It was like they could tell you enough to keep you but they could never tell you enough to have you adequately informed. Especially when I was deliberating and contemplating my own departure, they couldn't even explain to me why I was placed within the internship location that I was given, considering the lack of preparation for this position. And interestingly enough, it's been brought to my attention, and for the sake of this video, it has been alleged that my departure from this program has been presented to class nine in the same presentation that was given to me when I was part of class eight, which is interesting to be insinuated considering anything said by the administrative staffing would be a fallacy other than me leaving the program. I haven't spoken to my administrative advisor, advisor. I haven't spoken to my coach. I haven't spoken to Mr. V, who was supposed to do a farewell meeting with me and never got back to me. I haven't spoken to them since my departure, although my coach did reach out to me to recruit more students, which would be just ridiculous considering that he was very um, absentee in my time of quote unquote need so anything that would be said within that powerpoint would be an absolute lie other than me quitting the program for anyone that wants to know why i dropped out of this program it was because of my internship placement due to the inadequate preparation and lacking the knowledge of my prospective role i made the decision to leave It's been alleged that I quit the program because the program was too rigorous, which is hard to fathom considering I was one of the top performers of my learning community. I did not enroll in this program to become a frontline client representative, aka an inbound call center associate. I was not taught home equity line of credit. I was not taught mortgages. I was not taught my product within the six months of learning and development while being a part of the Europe program, which is their entire job to teach me of the trade. Europe is a glorified trade school, and it really didn't even fulfill that. If I was given the proper preparation, I would have withstood my internship experience for the sake of completion. I rarely quit anything that I do. I'm just not a quitter. I don't. But given the demand of the internship, not the program, But the internship, it took a toll on my overall health, mentally, emotionally, physically, it took a toll on my health, so I had to leave. So long story short, Europe did not prepare me or any of the students for the internship location that we were sent to. 
majority of the classmates that I went on internship with, they quit soon after I left. There was only one person that stood the test of time, you know? There was only one person that that got taken on by my internship location. I had no issue with the company. I had no issue with the bank. It was just the product. The product was not fit for students our age. Even my mentor at um, the bank that I was interning within, she told me, we're not supposed to be here. You guys should not be here. You guys should not be dealing with this product. And soon after I left, that's when they stopped welcoming people into home home equity line of credits and mortgages. So I just found that to be interesting because anyone that was a part of my class and a part of my learning community knew that I could handle a challenge. You can even look at my LinkedIn profile and see what I've been endorsed for. And again, I share this not as a means to boast, but just as a means for receipts. I'm speaking very highly of myself, and I'm pretty sure you're like, girl, get out of here. But I promise you, I speak as candidly as I've been able to because I know who I am and I know what it was. So overall, there was just a lot of false advertisement and propaganda used within this program. Even the built-in incentives of recruitment seem to be a false advertisement considering you had children who have yet to complete the program recruiting potential students, selling them half of an experience as opposed to a full experience. So there's just a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of interesting aspects of this program to say the least. And just to end this video, I wanna say I will always be an advocate of minority youth. I'll always be an advocate for myself as a black woman. And if that resonates with other black women, if that resonates with other black people, then, you know, I've done my job. I'm a Libra and I'm also a Virgo moon. So I really love to nurture. I really love to assist. I really love to help. I love to be of service to people. And, you know, I just, I don't want y'all to think you should not apply for this program, that you should not go through the six months of learning and development and internship because in the end you're going to be rewarded a job opportunity you're not going to be rewarded a career per se but you are going to be given a job and if you are of necessity for such a circumstance or opportunity who am I to tell you not to do it so to spare a bit of political correctness or political correctives I just want to say finesse the program in the way that it will finesse you You know, I'm really just trying to put you on game, give you a little bit of awareness in the way that I wasn't given when I joined this program. There was no real videos that I could recall to where they were sharing their real experience. I don't think my experience was completely negative and, you know, terrible, but there was a lot of slick and passive ways about this program that inevitably led to my demise. And of course, you know, I take accountability for my experience, but there were certain contributing factors that also influenced my personal experience. But again, if you want to do year up, I support you. If you feel like this is a good opportunity for you, then it's a good opportunity for you. I'm not telling you not to join this program. It's not a great program, but it's a good one. It's good enough to get you a job if you do well within it, if you finesse it in the way that it will finesse you, 